Matt, I'm pretty excited about this video. Me too, man. We are talking about our top seven surplus rifles. Why seven? Because we couldn't narrow it down any more <laughs> than that, guys. Clint here with Classic Firearms, and we've got Matt back today. What's up, guys? And yeah, we're talking about surplus rifles. So let's hop right into it. Grab that K31. All right. First rifle on deck, guys, K31. Now, before we even start talking about all this stuff, a lot of these rifles we're talking about, we simply don't have in stock. Why? Because, well, we, we just don't. We don't have I in mean, stock. Do we have demand, them? Yeah, high demand, demand, whatever. I mean, low supply. Do we physically have them here? Yes. Why, you ask? Well, maybe we're going to be doing something special with them in the future. Who knows? It's not like we give away guns. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, yeah, of course we do. But uh, so make sure you are going to the product ad and you will see there, just type in K31, type in, uh, I don't want to give up, infield, you know, whatever, and spoiler alert. Yeah. You know, and uh, if it says out of stock, type in your email and then you'll receive an email once that product comes back in stock. But it's surplus, so whoever, who knows? Yeah, it's always a mystery what we're going to get, where we can find things. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we just get pleasant surprises in our emails. Yeah, and one of those surprises was this guy right here. Matt, what can you tell us about the K31? So the K31 is a Swiss rifle. It's a straight pull bolt. So it uses like a sleeve around the bolt to cam, mm -hmm. to close the action and lock it. Yep. And it's in 7.5 Swiss, which is a fantastic cartridge. Fantastic cartridge. Yep. The GP11 is one of the most inherent accurate like cartridges out there. And that's probably why a lot of these have been used in competition, like this guy yeah. actually has these competition little stickers on it, which is pretty cool. You'll notice them right up here in front of the receiver. So pretty neat. And I do want to say that a lot of these rifles that I have seen in the past when we had K30, 31s, other 11s, things like that, uh, there were, there's definitely been some sort of trigger job on a lot of these. This guy here, look at this guys. I wonder if I can make this show up as well as I can, but this thing's what, maybe a pound, two pounds? Yeah, it's so, really light. So it feels like a two stage, right? There's a little bit of take up before you hit that wall and then it's just, that's it. I mean, it's and, and like, I, yeah. I own a K31 and it is a fantastic rifle to shoot. I think that they are definitely one of the top picks you could get for starting your surplus collection or expanding it. Yep. And uh, yeah, I mean, they still make GP11 uh, oh, yeah. in, in Switzerland. You can still get it imported. And I mean, I just couldn't say enough about this gun, it's, it's a fantastic rifle. Heck yeah, guys, K31, sweet. What's up next? All right, we got the Carcano up next. The Carcano, now this one here is one we do have in stock. So we're talking about the Carcano, Carcano rifle in general, but right. what we have here is the Calvary model. And I would say probably one of the best reasons to own a rifle like this is its cost factor. Yep, uh, so these are a more inexpensive surplus rifle to pick up. Um, I also really like the Mannlicher end block clip style feeding mechanism. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's really cool where you just jam the whole thing, the whole packet into the rifle. Yeah. And, uh, it makes for some quick reloads because you just grab a whole loaded clip, shove it in, and you're good to go again. Yeah, and having shot one of these myself, uh, not this one specifically, but a Carcano Ca Calvary model, uh, these things are easy to shoot. Yes. Like super light recoiling, but it feels like it still packs a little bit of a punch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just fun shooters. So, so. I, I picked up one myself, and you just couldn't beat the price. And so you own one. I do own one. Yeah. And uh, I agree, with the ammunition that we had available, mm. it was very light recoil considering how lightweight and small this rifle is. Yeah. Um, of course, depending on the load, you might expect some stiffer recoil if it was a right. heavy load, but what we were able to pick up, uh, definitely very pleasant to shoot. Gotcha. So check out the Carcano, guys. Now, of course, this one has a little bit of history to it. Mm -hmm. Well, the Carcano rifle in general, because there might be a certain president, JFK, uh, you guys know the story. So anyway, the Carcano rifle is the rifle that was credited with the assassination of JFK. Okay. And well, there's also the magic bullet theory, the man on the hill. So who knows? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments section. That's a fun stuff that you can get into there. Oh uh, yeah, it's a deep dark hole. But anyway, let's move on to the next one. All right, so we've got the Lee Enfield number four Mark one rifle. So of course, everyone who's into surplus rifles is gonna be very familiar with this rifle. One of the great things about this one is that it is a 10 round magazine. So often hmm. you have five, maybe six rounds in a magazine when it comes to these surplus rifles, but this one has 10, which gave it a great amount of fire superiority when it came to other rifles of its era. Right, so what's cool about this guy too, well, something that I still have to get used to is the action on this one. So this one right here has what's called a cock on close right. instead of an open with what we're used to with like a Mauser action. That's right. And uh, so do you want to describe how that works and what maybe the mindset was behind that? Sure, so the idea is some kind of body mechanics. So yeah. most bolt action rifles will cock when you 
open the action, and that's what forces the striker back. In this case, you can see the striker is forward until you push forward on the bolt, and that is when it gets cocked. And the idea is that the pushing motion is stronger than the turning motion, yeah. uh, so it's gonna be easier for you to work that action faster. Right, and of course, you know, even though it might simply be easier naturally, those of us that grew up on a Mauser action right. start doing this and we're like, whoa, what, what's going on here? Because it's very easy to open, right. you know, and unlike right. the Mauser action for your- springs open yes. almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's fun. And uh, of course you have the mad minute that you right. can try to perform where you just try to mag dump the thing and I suck at it, so <laughs> yeah, whatever. Mag dump, Morgan can't mag dump the uh, I mean, I can, it just doesn't <laughs> look good. <laughs> so the, uh, the infield guys, and of course the infield rifle has all sorts of different variants. You've got all sure. sorts of different numbers and marks and everything else. Um, and I suggest you guys go take a look at all of them because they're all pretty sweet. Okay. Yeah. Still waiting for, uh, what, what's the one you want, Ryan? Number one Mark three. Number one Mark three. So yeah. hopefully we'll get a couple of those little snub nose guys soon, you know, so that way he can be happy. The SMLE, right? That's right. Yes. The, the smelly. Uh, so anyway, yes, the infield rifle has definitely served uh, for a long time. How long, long, has, long time. how long have these been in service? So of course, you know, there are various iterations, but you know, these came kind of interwar and right. then, you know, they served all the way up until like, even as late as like the early 2000s where they were being used by police in yeah. things like uh, Canada. So, I mean, it's super long service life, definitely a reliable, dependable rifle. One yeah. of the classics of military collecting. Yeah, I would uh, say so. Couldn't go wrong with with one of these. Nah, yeah, if you're, if you're a milserp dude, you gotta have one of these. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. And now let's get a little bit of a German in us here. So I just talked about the Mauser action where you got the cock on open instead of the cock on close. And that's exactly what we have here is a K98 Mauser. That's right. Now this one specifically has got a DOU mark on it and you got all your little war eagles and everything. And it is a super cool platform. Matt, what can you tell us about this caliber and all that kind of fun stuff? Well, so it's an eight millimeter Mauser, which is actually 7.92 by 57. Mm -hmm. um, it's fantastic cartridge, uh, full powered cartridge. We're not into intermediate cartridges, uh, very much a, a, a good strong knockdown round. Oh, but yeah. uh, you know, it shoots from a five round internal magazine fed by an, a strip clip. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just that reliable, super solid Mauser action that's copied world round and has stood the test of time. Uh, we've said it before, but basically every hunting rifle known to man today yeah. is a descendant of this action. Now, I actually kind of want to take for just a second and just do kind of an honorable mention really quick, mm -hmm. because the similar action can be found on this rifle, right? That's right. Um, effectively the exact same action. Uh, you know, this is the 1903 Springfield and it is a Mauser action. Mm -hmm. You can even see like the safety levers are the same on the bolts here. Right. I mean, it is it is a copy, which is why we lost their, uh, their <laughs> copyright suit against us. Yeah, so can you actually tell us a little bit about that? Because I find that to be kind of interesting history with the Mauser action on the O3. Sure, so we uh, were using the Craig Jorgensen rifle and we were getting our butts kicked in the Spanish American War against seven millimeter Mauser, Mauser action rifle. So we decided to adopt a Mauser action rifle. We developed the 1903 in 30 out six. And Mauser sued us and said, hey, that's copyright infringement. You're using yeah. our design. And we lost that lawsuit, but then World War One started in we didn't pay them. Yeah, we didn't pay them, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, cool. So put that back up there. All right, tight. So the K98 guy is definitely one that still has a lot of potential today. I mean, the eight millimeter cartridge is still in wide use among all sorts of rifles today yeah. too. So K98, definitely, definitely a top surplus rifle. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's head over to the Allied Powers again. The legend. <laughs> the M1 Garand, or the however, greatest battle uh, implement known to man. That's right, man. Patton loved this guy. I love this guy. And you know what else I love? <laughs> that right there. So guys, this 30-06 semi-auto battle rifle is, like I said, it is a legend. This thing is iconic and it just screams defeating fascism all day long. <laughs> and uh, I absolutely love this rifle. So this rifle, uh, John Garand, mm -hmm pretty much designed this guy because we were looking for that new, I mean, so it was post World War One, mm -hmm. and we were looking for that new battle rifle to start kind of taking over the field because trench warfare became kind of a thing and that's kind of what we grew up on in a sense, uh, whenever this guy became, you know, 
I guess you could say the new standard issue rifle. But it was also in addition to like the M1 carbine. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had several other, the, the 1943 Johnson. I mean, you're a Marine, you were still using mostly 1903s during World yeah, War II. Yeah, so. that's true. I'm like, and also to that radial, uh, what's it called, the Johnson rifle. Mm -hmm. You know, that we were still using that radial magazine thing. I mean, it's pretty wild. Uh, what more can you tell us about this guy? I know I kind of lightly touched on it. All right, so, I mean, you mentioned the caliber 30-06. It wasn't actually originally designed in 30-06. It was like a 276 Peterson or something. Right. Um, and it was one of several designs that we went through, including like the Peterson rifle. Peterson was another designer. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the one that eventually went out. And basically the reason we changed it to 30-06 is because we just had a bunch of it left over. You know, right. from having issued those yeah. guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, eight rounds on tap. So again, you have that fire superiority benefit over say a Mauser or yep. uh, some other rifles during the, that theater and semi-auto. So yeah. you, you have vastly, you know, faster fire. Uh, in fact, you could almost worry about the guys going through ammo too fast. Right, yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so there's your in-block clip. You just kind of stagger the rounds in here. You kind of load it like a regular magazine in a sense. Uh, and then once you're ready to rock and roll, just drop that guy in there, press down on the internal follower that you see here, just kind of push back with your hand, let it go, you're yeah. ready to go. Of course, you always hear the term grand thumb and I'm not talking about the YouTuber, that's <laughs> awesome. I am talking about getting your thumb caught in there by doing such an action and uh, it doesn't look pretty when that happens. But man, this thing is an absolute beauty and I love it. America. And back to Europe, we've got a Moss. Yep. Now, before I even go any further here, something actually really caught my eye with this rifle. Mm -hmm. And you can't guess what it is, can you? I can, I don't think they can see it yet. Yeah, so there's a charging handle on this guy that originally it was like a piece of plastic, like a piece of bake light, right? Yeah. And of course that would oftentimes, you know, erode, fall off, break, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And this one soldier decided the casing to his bullet, the shell actually would have been a great replacement part. And oh, I- That doesn't look comfortable. <laughs> I mean, hey, so there's something that I've learned in the Marines. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. Right, true. Right, so I mean, hey, it's a little bit larger and it sticks out a little bit further than just this metal knob. And so, I mean, hey, there you go. Yeah, but you got these like split ends and the kind of pin he used looks like just bent over nails sticking out. Yeah. You're, just, you're so free for a man. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I think this is a piece of art. Look at that. I it's mean, it, it is uh, functional, I suppose, but I mean, I can't imagine you're trying to do a rapid reload with that thing. You're just going to slice your hand open. Man, you're just always complaining about stuff. Hey, give us some history about the Moss 49. Well, the Moss 49, or in this case, actually a Moss 4956 mm -hmm. is a great rifle. So the French started designing it prior to World War II breaking out, but due to set events of World War II. They were not able to finish the development, so they finally developed it after the war and got started getting into service. Uh, the 4956 is a lightened version of that rifle, so okay. they tried to take some weight off of it. But uh, really interestingly, this uses a true direct gas impingement system. So if you actually open the uh, bolt here, the carrier, you will see that there's a gas tube that comes out. There you go. Yep, there it is. Uh, comes out right here and actually goes directly into the bolt carrier. So there's no, it's not even like an AR where it kind of turns the uh, the bolt head like a piston right. or something. It, it pushes that bolt carrier directly back in order to pick up the uh, bolt and pull it back. Nice, so a true direct impingement. A lot of people will say, you know, I have seen the comments before, ARs aren't direct impingement. And I'm like, yeah. ah, they are, but I see where you're coming from, yeah. but they are. <laughs> so there's that. But anyway, the Moss 49, pretty cool rifle. And uh, also too, it's a, uh, it's a magazine with a clip. It's not clip fed by any means, but it does have a magazine with literally a clip on it and that's its retaining system. Well, so I love that design actually. It's so yeah. simple, but effective. Like yeah. it, and it, it works. Yeah. yeah. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and bring us to our next one. Oh, now what we have here is a Mosin Nagant, right? That's right, we couldn't do a video on classic surplus rifles without mentioning a Mosin Nagant. Right. But this but isn't this, your typical 9130. This is a Mosin Nagant perfected. Yeah, I would say that's a that's a good way to put it. So, you know, the, the Finns were looking for a new rifle and yep. they settled on the Mosin Nagant action because they had a pretty close relationship with Russia due to geographical location and all. Um, so all of the receivers on 91, I'm sorry, on the uh, Finnish Mosins are made in Russia. They're purchased from Russia. But they, they completed the rifles, they built their own barrels, they finished out the stocks all by themselves. And what you have is probably the epitome of what's possible with that Mosin gun action. Yeah, so this thing is absolutely gorgeous. This is the M39 still chambered in 762 by 54 r of course, which is a great cartridge. And uh, 
They're beautiful. They I are. mean, like, so first off, there's a couple of things you can tell in the difference of like a Mosin Nagant. So the stock to begin with, the stock is much beefier. You mm -hmm. don't have the exposed cleaning rod. The cleaning rod is actually captured, which is kind of nice and completely enclosed, mm -hmm. uh, except for just the tip. And everything about it, like I said, Hush. Everything about it is just beautiful. They beefened everything up, including the barrel. I think these are far more accurate rifles. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen these used in competitions even before, which I think is really cool. And again, guys, these things and the way they, they kind of combine the stock. Can you show them? Yeah. yeah. So the stocks are joint here with a variety of kind of fingers. So mm -hmm. being that these are more rounded, so this is more like a pre-war stock, um, they got much more uh, angular uh, square cut as you yeah. went through the war. Um, but yeah, so this is a, a two part stock here. Yeah, and I do want to see if you guys can pick that up. Cause I think, I mean, I think it's just, again, gorgeous. I mm -hmm. think it's beautiful how it's done, but also just like super neat how they kind of just combined them like that. So you, know, you said because it's more rounded in these fingers, again, it's probably a little difficult to pick up on camera, but you can see there's one of those fingers there that's rounded. That was a indication that it was a earlier stock. Correct. Yeah, pretty neat. Um, if we flip it around, you can see the receiver marking. So this one is made by Seiko. Mm. Um, and you can see actually where they ground off the Russian Imperial Eagle. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, all of the receivers were made in Russia. And when they uh, assemble these, the, the barrels are actually free floated. So oh, wow. inside of the stock yeah. um, makes it for a very accurate rifle. And, you know, there's that kind of a legacy of, of marksmanship, you know, you hear about things like Seema Hayek and oh, yes. the White yeah, but, Death. Yeah, so Seema Hayek is also the guy that got shot in the jaw, right? He did. He's, yeah. he's a real bad mother trucker. So. <laughs> yeah, so check him out, by the way, guys, because you're talking about snipers that didn't utilize optics or anything like that. Right. He says iron guys, sights were the way to go. Yeah, I mean, because, well, he didn't have to rely on anything failing him at that point, mm -hmm. right? Especially, it's not like, you know, the weather in Finland's ideal, <laughs> right? I mean, you're talking about heavy snow and everything else, and this guy was able to use his environment around him mm -hmm. to conceal himself I mean he's talking he's he's literally attacking like divisions of you know Germans and everything else coming through and winning yeah. by himself it's like what <laughs> uh, so one of the other things he said I thought was interesting was like why would you shoot someone from 100 yards when you could shoot him from 300 yards yeah like <laughs> Dude, it's, it's incredible, man. So yeah, what he did with this rifle is just pretty sweet, all right? So I think we're gonna leave it off there. Matt, if you had to choose any of these at your favorite, what would it be? So you know I'm a big commie guy, commie gun guy. Yeah. So I really love the M39, but... Ah, so your choice is the K31. K31. I gotcha. Well, I'm a proud American, mm -hmm. obviously, and ah, my bet's gonna go with this guy right here. Yeah. The, like I said, the legend. The M1 Grand, the Ping, the N Block Clip, the 30 out 6. Yeah, Bay. <laughs> anyway, closing out this video, guys, we're also going to talk about another legendary rifle, and that's our current giveaway. This guy, 7.62 NATO, 20 round box mag, EOTech package, and what I mean by that is you're getting the holographic sight and also the magnifier based off the FAL, the DS Arms SA58 improved battle rifle that I have right here is a beast and i absolutely encourage every last one of you guys watching this video to go get your entries in on this rifle because first off it's the right arm of the free world and we love our freedoms so go get your entries in for this guy because you speaking of free are getting it for free absolutely free that's right so head on over to classicfirearms.com hit that top banner it's going to take you to a web page that shows you all the different ways to get your entries and we made the code word for this giveaway to get your extra entries real difficult it's because it's not a word it's an abbreviation. Can you guess what the abbreviation is? F-A-L. That's it. That's your code word. F-A-L. Again, head on over to classicfirearms.com. Get your entries there, guys. And let us know what's your favorite surplus rifle, featured or not. Well, I want to hear from you guys. And I'll leave it at that. Matt, anything else? Yeah. Um, if this is the right arm of the free roll, what's the left? The AK. Of the free world? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Let's hey. put it down in the comments. So yeah. if you, what's your guess as to what's the left arm of the free world? Maybe the AR-15? Maybe. Maybe. I, was, I don't know. That's a good one. Hmm. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. Think about that. You know, let that marinate for a bit and give us your response down in the comments section. Guys, as always, we appreciate your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.